There are a lot of reasons why we may forget important information when it comes to things that are uh, integral to keeping our lives going. So why do we forget? First theory is the disuse theory. We simply stop using the information, and so the information just fades away. The, uh, the, the signals that are kept in the brain to recall things, they don't get used, and therefore they're not strengthened over time to create the, the proper connections. So we just lose it. You, you, you don't use it, you lose it kind of a thing. There's another one called cue-dependent forgetting, or sometimes cue-dependent recall. And what happens is, is that we don't have the right cue, we don't have the right trigger, we don't have the right external thing to help us recall what it is. Um, sometimes it happens with names, and one thing that in my particular classes that I have a tendency to do too much is that certain comments or questions that my students will say will trigger other ideas of things like, oh yeah, that's what I wanted to say, that's, oh yeah, that's right, that reminds me. And so for me, it's more of a problem of cue-dependent remembering as opposed to cue-dependent forgetting. But uh, the tip of the tongue phenomena is often the, the cue-dependent forgetting. Then there's the interference theory. And there are two kinds of interference. There is proactive interference, and that's where the old information interferes with new information. New information. And I like to look at that as the old pro prevents the rookie from being able to play. So the old information does not allow you to learn the new information. And sometimes when that happens, you might call a, um, a new girlfriend or boyfriend by a previous girlfriend or boyfriend's name. So that's going to be a proactive interference. Then you've got retroactive interference. And that's where the new information interferes with the old. This happens to me every time I get a new semester of students. The, as I'm busy learning the names of my new students, I tend to, to be perfectly honest with you, and all teachers do this typically, we tend to forget the names of our previous students, even if it was someone from just two, three, four weeks ago. And so it really helps us to recall your names if you make an impression on us. But even then, retroactive interference may play a role, and these new students' names may interfere with our ability to recall the old student names. But there's a mnemonic that you can use to remember this, and that is porn. Proactive deals with old information staying, and retroactive deals with new information staying. And so, yes, you can say that you learned about porn in your AP Psychology class, but it's a little quick mnemonic to help you recall the difference between proactive and retroactive interference. Hope this helps you out.